Hey, I'm Blake Smith. And I'm Matt King. And we are the Video Island Podcast. That's right. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking about ways that you can repurpose and update your video content. Sure will. <laughs> All right, and welcome to another episode of the Video Island Podcast. And today's episode, we're gonna be covering a topic such as repurposing and updating your video content. Mm -hmm. So with that said, we're gonna dive right into it. Yeah. Uh, so Matt, give our lovely viewers and listeners yeah. um, just a few examples that you know come to mind um, when it comes to, I guess, let, let's start with one, because there's repurposing and then there's updating. There's obviously, sure. there's differences there. Yep. So let's focus on repurposing sure. uh, a video. Mm -hmm. Can you share some examples with our lovely viewers and watchers, listeners, mm -hmm. whatever they be? Mm -hmm. um, can you just share some examples that you you think that, are, that come to mind when it comes to repurposing video content? Yeah, so um, obviously you don't want to just uh, produce a video and then feel like it kind of just has that one use only, right? So. It's really about the idea of like taking the most out of one piece of video content and stretching it as much as you can without kind of making it too much of a redundant piece as well, right? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of sensitive there, but um, I think the most effective way and most cost effective way of looking at a piece of video content is figuring out all the different ways you can kind of sprinkle it around mm -hmm. to. Like the different um, channels? And yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah. So in terms of different channels and repurposing, um, I know that we do uh, quite a bit of, you know, we'll produce a video that's maybe it's a two minute video or two and a half minute video, say, um, <clears throat> and that can just live as the long form piece of content. But, you know, for social media channels that we have, um, maybe there's a way that uh, you can uh, take another look at um, cutting some of the lo longer pieces of that video away to make kind of like a highlight piece or a mm -hmm. little bit of a, what we call like almost like a sizzle reel kind mm -hmm. of thing mm -hmm. that you can put on your social media uh, channels to get people kind of interested and yeah. kind of get their one foot in the door so that they're interested in watching the longer form yeah. piece. Um, doing that is kind of like the one-two punch of like video, you know what I mean? It's like not only do you have like the long form, but then you have that shorter little kind of real people, people or anything. Mm -hmm. And this is nothing new, but I think people miss out on this opportunity quite a bit. They miss out on that ability and kind of realize too late uh, that they had the opportunity to kind of, you know, get uh, more than one video out of one piece of content kind mm -hmm. of thing, right? Yeah, and then to riff on that, right? Because you gotta think, like some social platforms like Instagram per se, um, you post a video on Instagram, you're only allowed one minute, and then if you post in an Instagram story, you're only allowed 15 seconds, right? right. So you gotta think about, and, and it obviously comes down to how you are trying to utilize this video content, That's right? right? So, Maybe there is a campaign and you have a hero video um, that lives maybe on said landing page for this campaign yeah. um, or it's in within emails, but if you're also trying to stir up more buzz socially, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in that, that example of using Instagram, maybe that is you do a sizzle reel mm -hmm. or you do a teaser video that kind of tees up, you know, what the, the subject matter is, yeah. but doesn't really dive into what it, you know what it is it just asks the question and you have to find out by you know clicking on that said link that will take you to said landing page where you can watch the thing in its entirety right so you can use it in those ways um, another example that comes to mind it just says you're talking there is yeah. um, and we do it quite a bit is um, taking those videos or so you have that hero video or whatever it be, and if it's on a landing page, you can use those elements within the video and make little snippets, maybe that are five seconds, so whether it is a video itself or or it's just a GIF, and you're just showing, because maybe on that page, you're t uh, one of those uh, bullet points is highlighting a feature, and then obviously right. within that video, you're showcasing that feature. feature. Yeah. So why design something else or anything like that when you can just, you know, take that snippet of said video, mm -hmm. slap it in there. Or maybe it's not from that specific video. Maybe it is a demo or something that somebody else recorded mm -hmm. and you just take you know that little section and you throw it in there uh, just to really um, you know hone in on what said feature is. Yeah, I think it's, again, it just comes back to the idea of like being the most efficient with uh, your time and uh, video content that you have, right? So rather than having to set up uh, an additional uh, set of um, you know production time just to have somebody uh, make a video just for social specifically, right? 
Um, rather than have to go through that whole recording process, you can pull something from the video that you created in the first place, right? So if you can figure out ways to kind of craftily go about doing that, mm -hmm. um, it can save you time and potentially money, to, uh, uh, particularly if you're not, you know, doing it in-house. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's a good factor as yeah. well. And you know, all you have to do for the social um, side of things is like, you know, if you want to add something, not only just the description linking to the longer form content, but you can add a graphic with like a, a call to action at the end yeah. of the little yeah. quick highlight that kind of like gets people it's in text you know and it gets people to click on the next yeah. you know yeah. uh, go to the go to the appropriate page or wherever your yeah. long form video might live yeah. so that's kind of like the fun like science of videos like kind of like making something that's visually and audibly appealing in a shorter format to get them to watch the longer format and hopefully mm -hmm. they get to enjoy that too and you know get the information that they need so yeah and another um, an example of repurposing content uh, and this is actually an example of repurposing multiple pieces of uh, videos mm -hmm. um, an individual on our uh, product marketing team uh, he did this for an event booth but he also did it in a way um, similar fashion but it's basically taking these multiple videos mm -hmm. and removing the audio yeah and then removing any talking head elements right and then just sh so taking basically the b-roll and then adding his own voice over to it right but having it just be b-roll uh, specific right. um and then he has his own talk track so he can you know make his own story yeah. per yeah. se yeah you're building a new narrative and but he's repurposing these other videos yeah. uh visuals the b-roll and mm -hmm. splicing it in his own order mm -hmm. and sure it's, it's lightly um similar content because obviously it would be similar content if it's showing the same visuals right, right. it'd be kind of a little odd if it was a completely different thing right. you're still showing the same visuals right but the fact that you know he was able to take the video content that we made yeah and you know make his own piece just run with it yeah and it's not like he had to do any of the motion graphics or shoot any of these right. things it's just a matter of pulling these videos and then splicing up in his own <clears throat> sorry in his own uh fashion yeah i think it's crafty i think that's getting and then with the content. yeah and in, in the same instance um for an event it was uh it wasn't him who did it, it was somebody else but similar thing is taking all these visuals and splicing it together mm -hmm. and then given it was at an event there's no audio right so those things you don't need to worry about it's just a matter of taking those elements putting in whatever you know order you want mm -hmm. and bingo bango you have yourself a a nice visual asset for uh, your booth at said conference. That's right, yeah. Rather than producing a whole new, brand new video specifically for that conference, exactly. right, you're going back to the well, um, which kind of, I guess, segues us into our next kind of point a little bit, but going back to the well and looking at your library of content to creating something new out of it, right? Mm -hmm. Which is kind of cool. Yeah, and yeah, and so, yeah, there's the ways of repurposing and then there's obviously, you know, and that's our other topic that we're going to touch on is um, updating said mm -hmm. video content. Mm -hmm. And so I guess we'll just use it as a natural segue yeah. into our next uh, bit being updating video content. Uh, so I guess I'll lob you the ball there. Um, <laughs> anything come to mind? Any examples that you have there when it comes to updating yeah. video content? Yeah, this is something that uh, uh, we have to do um, to be the most efficient with uh, the time that we have, right? Mm -hmm. Is that um, we do um, a decent amount of videos per year, um, but it's important that, you know, we're not kind of stepping over something that we've already produced just to do it again. You know, are we, are we producing, are we shooting a video of something that we haven't shot before? Or uh, you know, for a reason, you know what I mean? Like, or is it something that we can go back to the library of videos that we've shot and find uh, somebody saying something that's still pertinent to our new video that we want to create, or a uh, piece of B-roll and content that we can repurpose again? Say, for example, you have somebody working at the desk doing something um, uh, technical or whatever, 
All right, that, that's a piece of B-roll that can uh, live on in our industry uh, multiple times over, right? Obviously, you wanna be sensitive with how many times you're going back and using that, right? Because if somebody watches your videos across the board on your website and they keep seeing the same person doing the same thing, it starts to look a little repetitive. You, you wanna keep that visual interest alive, so you have to be sensitive about how much, how often you use that content, but um, it's a great way to reuse and repurpose, right? Rather than me you know, going ahead and every time I need to get a fairly similar shot being that it's people working on a on a computer um, I can only have to I only have to shoot it a few times and have it be able to live on in multiple videos after the fact by just me going to our library uh, on our hard drive and kind of looking for those b-roll pieces because I know where they live right so um, uh, along with other things too like a lot of the videos that we should have to do with um, our platform which is um, uh, based on a computer obviously so we do a lot of things like um, shoot a, um, a, a computer or a laptop in a nice open space. It's just kind of like a nice visual space, um, but with the main focus being on that computer or that laptop. And we don't shoot the actual product on that screen. We use a blank screen. So we usually use like a white screen, for example, uh, on that computer or laptop so that we can, you know, uh, uh, motion track if we have motion in the shot or we can just overlay um, um, our uh, our footage after the fact on our computer. So mm -hmm. uh, you do that in After Effects, for example. So um, we can just go onto our computer and screen record ourselves doing the steps and things like that that we want to show, and then we overlay that on top of that um, backing video that we've shot previously. And then what's nice about that is that um, I can use that laptop shot again down the road several months later or a year later for uh, another similar kind of video, right? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a sweet um, reusable element, right? That um, you're not constantly having to go and shoot another computer in a different way. And we find that um, the imagery when shooting um, products and things like that and features on a computer, it just shows up a lot cleaner because sometimes you get a lot of the pixels showing up and a lot of like the funny um, things and issues that happen with um, screens when you're trying to shoot um, uh, the actual elements on a screen mm -hmm. versus just overlaying it after the fact and doing some blending and things like that. Yeah, That's so, a crafty little thing. yeah, and in that approach, I guess, you know, in, in the subject matter of updating video content, that's more of future-proofing. So, yeah. so in the example of said laptop screen and you want to, you know, you're showcasing a product yeah. and then maybe down the line that said product gets updated. That's right. What do you, you know, in that situation where you just shot that laptop screen blank and then you, you apply that product shot in post, yeah. you know, it allows, it gives you a lot more flexibility down the road when you do have to come back and maybe update that video that you don't have to go back and reshoot said device. It's just a matter of going into that After Effects project and pulling out that product shot and then yeah. replacing it with the new one totally. and bingo bango. And it really, you know, saves a lot of time totally. because, you know, it's, it's, it's a matter of just deleting one layer and then adding another one opposed yeah. to having to set up the lights, get yeah. that same subject or same same talent yeah. and have them in said situation. Right. Same thing for um, obviously say you have a product, right? And maybe you've made some updates to that product. So maybe there's an element or a few elements of a previous video that you've made that are now perhaps obsolete, mm -hmm. right? So in that same instance, um, perhaps there's a way that you have produced that video that you can go back to it and realize, oh, if we only pluck out these few things and just reshoot these few elements, um, we can still use this original video as opposed to creating an entirely new video mm -hmm. or paying to create an entirely mm -hmm. new video mm -hmm. through outsourcing to a video agency, right? So in that same instance, it's like if you don't kind of date uh, your content by, uh, in the example, it's like you have somebody on camera or something very specific to a timeline or a time of year, you know, if you kind of keep that um, out of the video, that's gonna help even more, right? So that you're not necessarily restricted to like, oh, in 2018, we blah, 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 built this product mm -hmm. or something like that. It's mm -hmm. like, if you leave that out of the fact and leave that to other kind of forms of content, then that video can still live on um, and have a longer shelf life kind of mm -hmm. thing, right? So mm -hmm. um, again, uh, just being able to kind of think about ways to you know, be like, oh, this person said something about our product that is no longer um, 
a part of our product, right? Yeah. Well, perhaps you can just pull that whole thing out or maybe you have a new person speaking in that video and that replaces the original person, but the B-roll is still pertinent to yeah. your video, you know? So you don't have to necessarily replace that, you just have to replace the person speaking. Yeah. Um, that's still a huge time save. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and you know, and that, that obviously with that example, like it will require a little bit of lag work because in the situation of, yes, you're up, you're um, replacing said talent because Maybe said individual doesn't work at maybe. said company anymore, yeah. or maybe it's just time to spruce it up. Maybe that that initial person, you know, at the end of the day, maybe didn't you know perform so well, and you you just notice that maybe the the traction, the attraction to the video is just not performing as well. Yeah, you know, like, yeah, maybe you should try it with somebody else. Maybe get you know get someone with a little bit more pizzazz. You know yeah. what I mean. <laughs> And that, that happens though, right? You it know, does. It happens, it happens uh, in, our, uh, in our past. It's been like, you know what? We don't really feel that this person um, was the best person perhaps to maybe be um, communicating this point. Maybe mm -hmm. we need to try somebody else or rework it a little bit. Right? Or, or in the situation where it's not even uh, changing the individual, it's just, you know, like after review, maybe you already shot him whatnot and it's just like, yeah. You know, the feedback was that maybe they didn't perform so well or there's something going on in the shot, maybe the audio wasn't the greatest. Just go reshoot that. But all that um, B-roll that was included in that video, that all stays the same. Right. That all remains, that doesn't have to change. Yeah. Um, so there are, you know, different ways to go about updating a video. And, you know, it could be a simple, you know, whether it's like I've done it before or we did it before, Whereas uh, we actually had the video shot, everything was done, mm -hmm. uh, but the audio was not great. The room that we shot in, the audio wasn't that great. Everything was done, all the visuals, everything. And when we went and shot the talent, we recorded them in this room. Great shot, everything was good. And this person was on camera for, I'd say, 20, no more than 20% of the video. Yeah. And so what we actually had to do is we brought that, because the most of it outside of that 20% mm -hmm. was voiceover driven. So actually what we had to do was bring said individual into the studio or in our little um, recording booth for audio. Uh, we had to bring them into the studio and literally have them watch themselves in this video and dub themselves. Right. They had to recreate like their expression and everything in said video just because the room that we were, we were shooting in uh, it didn't sound so bad or as noticeably bad to the to the human ear, but when you know we brought it into the computer and started editing, it was just it was just off. It was distracting. It took you away from very awful. What just the were... reverb in the in the room is just it was just very very bad. But everything else was great. So yeah, we brought them into the into the recording booth and just had them redub it. Uh, it was it's a hacky way to go about it, you know, because we didn't want to have to you know take two steps back and have to redo all that because book another room exactly. uh, book another sh like do all schedule the, that time set individual set up all of the production gear yeah. again it was just seemed like the better option to we, we took our chances and gambled on being able to just do the mm -hmm. voiceover mm -hmm. and hopefully he could do a good job of recording over what he um, was uh, saying in the video kind yeah. of thing right. and, and it, it actually worked it totally worked it worked yeah. and actually that sa said video uh, just go on kind of looking backwards uh, to the example, we actually did that. We recycled that video and all the content, but we updated it with an, a new talent because what happened with that was the branding, the name, uh, the product's name changed. Yes. So we actually had to go back into, like all the product shots were the same, it's just we had to go in and take out the old name and put in the new. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we saw this as an opportunity to update the, the messaging in the video. Yeah. So we took the same script basically, updated it to be modern um, yeah. with the new name and branding of said product. Mm -hmm. And we just kind of boiled that into what we already had. So rather than having to recreate something, yeah. we just updated the script, yeah. 
changed the talent and then swapped in the branding and said product shots. It's there's something really satisfying about like when you can like do that and it's, it comes out clean. You're like, yeah, that actually like worked out, right? Like yeah. it's not overly fudgy. Like you you don't ever want to necessarily shoehorn something to work, but like if you can kind of craftily do it, that there's real clean kind of cuts between yeah. the old content and the new content. It's a really good feeling. Well, what's the term you use? You don't want to Frankenstein it, right? That's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You don't want this Frankenstein's monster thing of a video like hobbling around because it'll just look kind of like poorly put together yeah. and again it'll look kind of scrappy and that's not what we're going for. Like, so. There's obviously a line you gotta you gotta draw. Yeah. That's right, that's right. And again it comes back to like that idea of like knowing when you maybe do need to create a whole new video versus like when you can go back and just use some older content. And again, I, going back to what I said before, it's like how many times do you wanna go back to that same piece of content mm -hmm. as well, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's only so many times you wanna use the one shot of that specific individual doing that specific thing mm -hmm. um, as a piece of B-roll content, you know? Yeah. We can't use it across a dozen or more videos um, over the next four or five years, right? Yeah. At some point or another, we're gonna have to make sure that we, you know, make the decision to, you know, reshoot something like that and make it look a little bit more updated, right? Yeah. But in the time being, you can use it a handful of times across a few different pieces of content and it's, and it's all good, it's okay, yeah. Yeah. right? Particularly if you have different streams, right? It's like, say it's like, this is a geared towards one audience, right? And chances are that that audience will not see this other video that you're making that's geared towards another audience. That's perfect, right? That's yeah, a perfect opportunity definitely. to use the same B-roll or whatever, you know, to um, mm -hmm. uh, maximize your efficiency with uh, your production time. So, yeah, yeah it's crafty, so. Yeah. 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 And yeah, I'm just thinking of other examples of just updating content. Yeah. Um, yeah it's, it could, and it could just be as simple as using the same video because to your point, like there's an audience that's seeing one video and there's going to be a completely separate audience that's going to see this alternate version. Yeah. And in that situation when I'd update this video, it was a, a campaign video uh, to promote uh, our presence at said conference. And all we literally had to do was just change the graphic at the end With to, the to relate to said conference. Right. And that's all it took. That's right. And with the people that we knew that were, that were all at said conference and that were attending the, the same one, yeah. We just knew not to send it to them because this was this was all strictly email based. So it was yeah. so it was just we knew who we're sending these videos out to. It's not yeah. like it was just something that was living on YouTube that could just be found, yeah. right? Exactly. Yeah, you don't necessarily want to take like one like come on out to our booth at this conference and then like keep it generic enough that you can use it uh, six or a dozen times throughout the year, right? Mm -hmm. Particularly if you're not going to be sensitive enough to uh, pay attention to who you're emailing it out to, because if you're say if you're just doing the same email list, because chances are those same people are going to be at every conference that you're going to, yeah. Um, yeah, they're going to get sick of you really quick and they're going to pick up what you're putting down, right? So if you can be crafty about it, like, and we, we try to do that, you try and think about like, okay, like, these are the people that were at this conference. We clearly don't want to send them a um, repurposed video uh, that they've just saw a month ago. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take them out of that email list and maybe just send them like, uh, the generic message minus that video or something like that mm -hmm. so that we're still kind of keeping them in the loop yeah. and so um, yeah it's getting kind of it's that science side behind the video right so it's not only producing video content that's kind of have uh, that has quality and has a certain look about it but it's like how can you kind of like you know make it work for you uh, to have a lot of longevity and yeah. you know then you're not wasting so much time yeah and and, and that's always a, a good tactic to have in mind when you know, when you're rolling into production, just what are things that you can do, yeah. you know, to kind of prolong, mm -hmm. you know, um, that cycle of, oh, well, that video lasted, we used it once and now we got to make a new one. You know, what, yeah. what can you do that, you know, gives it that longer shelf life? Yeah. And, you know, we alluded to a, a bunch of examples of things that we can do. Um, and, you know, we can do a quick recap, right? Like, as you said, um, you know, maybe in said shoot, whether it's, um, you know, of you're shooting B-roll of individuals around the office, mm -hmm. great. Maybe shoot more than you actually need because maybe down the line, you're probably gonna be making another video along these lines yeah. and you can pull. Yeah. So maybe you didn't use all those shots, but you can pull from that same, I guess, library of footage yeah. that you shot from said production yeah. and you can use it somewhere else. Uh, another example which y you mentioned was the whole shooting devices, but don't shoot the laptop 
iPhone, whatever it be, shoot a blank. Mm -hmm. So then you can reuse those, maybe shoot them at different angles. Yeah. You know what I mean? So then what you can do is, you can use maybe that one angle for one video, but then now you can use mm -hmm. maybe a, the camera's further back, or maybe it's you know at a 45 degree angle, and you can use yeah. that for something else. That's right. Uh, you know, we do a lot of like thank you videos and, and welcomes, and so maybe when there's an opportunity to get your entire company together, the crew, whatever it be, and you have everyone together, maybe take that time to record. And, and obviously, it comes down to the types of videos that you create. Yeah. But our um, CX team, you know, they, they send out a lot of thank yous and welcomes mm -hmm. and etc. So in those opportunities when you're recording maybe the group together and recording a thank you video, well maybe think about those other situations that you, you know, could use this totally. type of thing. So yeah, get the hellos, the welcomes, the thank the yous, the woos. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and it, those are just, you know, is, do any other examples come to my, your mind in regards to like kind of future proofing um, yeah, well, I think your, your, your video content so you can repurpose the stuff for right. other pieces? Well, I think the other element that uh, we didn't really touch on is obviously um, uh, taking the time to um, probably build out a library, right? And um, in that, I know we talked about the library a few times about going back to the library, but said library should be some kind of folder structure that whoever is accessing this content or who could access the content will be able to have a shared folder to look into to find this kind of video footage. So maybe you have a pile of B-roll, right? That um, is labeled as like, people at desk or like, you know, people working on computer, right? Mm -hmm. And then you throw in all of your B-roll out there. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to throw in all of the edited, like ready to go stuff. You can throw in the whole, all the generic uncut footage <clears throat> in there. Mm -hmm. And then that's maybe, that maybe starts this large pool of, at the very basic level, starting off that pool of videos in an archive that anybody that is gonna to be touching uh, video content can have access to. Mm -hmm. People working at a computer, um, laptop, computer generic shots, right? All that kind of stuff. So that you're not necessarily having to remember like, what video was it again that I did this shot in, right? Maybe it can just all live in some mm -hmm. kind of um, root folder of, you know, uh, repurposed B-roll, you know, that you can go back to, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a, a, a probably a pretty good starting point as to how to you know put all that into one place for anybody. So, uh, for example, there's you and I. Um, we're pretty lucky at being able to kind of just bounce off of quickly each other if we need a piece of content, and we can recall where it is. But it can really help other teams, you know, having that super folder, right? Yeah. With kind of like generic labeled folders and plop that stuff in yeah. there. Yeah. So, um, and then you just pull from there. Yep. No and then it. obviously um, when it comes to like the more specific examples of having to repurpose a, a product video now that you've uh, found some areas are obsolete, obviously you just have to go back to the original yeah. uh, project itself. So yeah. um, that's a different kind of scenario. But those like generic elements or B-roll elements can certainly live in its own spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so I think that, you know, right there uh, in a whole really covers you know, ways that you can repurpose content and, you know, ways that you can go about updating it. So I guess in conclusion is before, you know, running into a video production, I guess think back or look back at your, your catalog of videos that you've made mm -hmm. and really, you know, try to exercise that and that notion of do we already have content that can serve this... Um, New purpose. Yeah, this, exactly. and. And if there is, then you review that said content and is that content still relevant? And if it is, great. You just repurpose it and use it for said, said uh, situation. Or maybe there is that situation where it's like, okay, that's great, the messaging still fits, but the product stuff, the shots of the product is a little out of date. Mm. So then what do you do? Rather than having to re redo a whole video, Take those sh uh, th those shots, B-roll, whatever. If it's B-roll done on the camera, if it's motion graphic based, take those out and put new ones in. It does. It's half the work. Sure, it still requires that that you know a little bit of love, mm -hmm. but it's half the job. And and depending, because you could be a one-person team, and you know, time is money. Like oh, right? always, time is money. And so, if there's ways that you can cut corners per se, mm -hmm. and 
and update these videos or repurpose them in ways, mm -hmm. you know, it just makes you more efficient mm -hmm. and you can just keep pumping things out. And, and then again, as we've kind of alluded to several times throughout this uh, episode is that it gives your videos longer shelf life. Totally. Yeah. And your boss will thank you. If you mm. say, listen, instead of us going and having to outsource like a whole new video to be created for say like $5,000, uh, it's going to cost us, maybe it's a, like 1200 bucks because or even less, maybe, or maybe nothing. it's nothing, but like if you're outsourcing, <laughs> right, it's like, maybe it's like, we just need to spend $1,200 because we need new product shots. And we'd like for that team to come back in and just grab a couple quick shots for us. Uh, that's a whole lot of savings want right there. Right. Mm. So if that's like the worst case scenario, then think about the best case scenario spending zero dollars because you can handle it in-house mm. and just make those quick switches on the fly yourself yeah so it's uh yeah it's yeah. getting scrappy with your content that's right? it's definitely definitely getting scrappy and and just think about it look back at your catalog of video content and before diving into a video production just think about what you have and ways that it can still you know achieve those situations and goals that you're trying to strive for yeah yeah Alrighty. well thank you for watching and uh yeah that was Today's episode. Catch you in the next one. Mm -hmm. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for watching this episode of the Video Island Podcast brought to you by Vidyard. You can subscribe to the audio version on your favorite podcast platform or check out more videos here.